well, I probably didn't even know what the word gay meant at the time, but I do remember being five years old. And I know that I was five years old because it was a moment on the back deck of my house where I was playing with a friend who came over after school and it was a kindergarten friend. So that's how I remember my age. And um, I even remember her name, but I won't say it. Um, protecting the innocent. She was this really cute little blonde girl in my class and she was my friend and I just wanted to hug her and like her smell was nice and I knew that you know I wanted to tell her I can still see her little hand we were like playing on the deck I don't remember what we were playing or what we were doing but I reached out and touched her hand and I knew that I couldn't linger too long or she might think it was weird and I also knew that I probably shouldn't let anybody else see that. But I don't think at five years old I processed it any further. But that is my first memory of knowing that I had some kind of draw towards a female and I probably shouldn't let anybody know about it. I came out when I was 21 for the first time. <laughs> um, I made mistakes coming out. I, um, well, I, made, I made typical mistakes that I think a lot of us make when we come out. We come out first as bisexual because somehow it's a gradual coming out. You keep one foot in the straight door and one foot in the gay door and you're kind of, I think it's also how we, we take it slowly with ourselves too. You know, you wake up one day and you're like, what is this thing that I am and I'm completely different and maybe it just means I like girl, maybe it just means I like girls too. Um, but I never liked any boys the way that I liked girls. And it wasn't just a sexual thing. Actually, more so, the, the notice of the difference was in my heart and in the way I had an affection for different girls in my life. It was, I had never had that kind of affection for boys in my life. And I had, I had boyfriends um, in, in grade school you know, my little boyfriends that I had these little crushes on. and But the way that I would feel about the girlfriends were always a little more intense, a little deeper, a little more profound, and um, meant, meant more to me. And in high school, I had a boyfriend who I love. I still love him. He's, a real, he's adorable. Um, everybody loved him. My mom loved him. He was this cute Italian boy. Everybody loved him. He wanted to marry me and take me to Italy. We had been sort of on again, off again, little couple in school from first grade right through graduating high school. And he was so wonderful. And we finally, as juniors in high school, like became that real couple. And I just didn't want anything more physically. I loved kissing him and hugging him because I loved him, but I just never had that natural progression towards wanting that further relationship with him. And when I was 21, I was in college and um, I finally fell in love for the first time and obviously it was with a girl and um, at that time when I realized what it was and that I was in love and sh I was going to be in a relationship with this person I decided um, a few months into it that I was going to tell my mom. My mom had always been the cool mom, the mom that you could have a few drinks with and she wasn't going to punish you. Not with, because my mom never drank. But you could ha go out and have a few drinks and come home and be honest with her. You didn't have to lie. I could go out when I was in high school and I never had to lie to my parents. I could tell them we were on the golf course drinking vodka out of, you know, gallon milk jugs that we made these drinks from. And as long as we were safe and as long as we didn't drive, that's, what, that's why it was easy not to lie to my parents because I didn't have to. And so all of my friends felt the same way about them and I thought, this won't be so bad. And I was in college, I was a volleyball player, I had blown out my knee. I was supposed to go be in the Olympics in two years. I was invited to the team, I was going to go train with them as soon as I finished school. And I blew out my knee, needed to be rebuilt, completely done. And my mom came down to the university, I was at University of Kentucky, and so did my girlfriend. <laughs> They both came to be with me, and my mom knew that this was my best friend and that we spent all of our time together. And I thought it was time to tell her because I saw my life moving forward. I saw myself graduating college, moving back to New York with her, getting an apartment, and I did not have the reaction that I thought I would have. In fact, of all of my friends and all the people I've gotten to know over time, I probably experienced one of the worst reactions from my mom that you could imagine. Um, 
she didn't kick me out of the house. She never said I'd be kicked out of the family. She didn't do that kind of thing. But the closeness that we had, the, the feeling that I could tell her anything was gone. And that was a huge loss for me. She wasn't the same with me. She was cold. She was distant. She didn't talk to me as much. She didn't show an interest in my life the way she did. She was scared of me. She was scared of my life. She was scared of what I might say. She was scared of what she might find out. And in retrospect, it was all about f the fear of the unknown. And she had no frame of reference for gay people. Having grown up in the 50s, she had a frame of reference that was about this big and it was all stereotypical stuff. And she got really scared. And she started to go through a process of thinking, oh my God, I don't even know my own daughter. She was feeling the same way that I was feeling as if all of a sudden she didn't know me, which was completely bizarro to me because I was the same person I'd ever been with one tiny difference it seemed to me. I'd fallen in love like anyone else, only it was simply with a girl and not a boy. Everything else about me was exactly the same. And for some reason my parents were afraid that they had to question everything about me, that this must mean they don't know anything about me, that they never did. And so there was this sadness and this mourning and she even talked about it being a death. And you know, anyone thinking about coming out, be ready for that. It's actually a healthy process to go through in retrospect. It is a death. It's the death of the fantasy life that they expected for you. You know, she could stop imagining me walking down the aisle in a white dress and having babies and, you know, obviously she didn't think this through and think, well, she's still going to have a relationship and she still could have a family and she still could do all of these things. But if it didn't look like the template that she expected it to, she had no idea what to expect. And so this was awful. And I went back into the closet because I could not stand A, losing my athletic career and B, losing my mom all at the same time. And I went back into the closet and I told her it was a phase and we experimented and it was done. And now we were just best friends. And my mom, needing to believe that so badly, went, okay. And for three more years, we just stayed that way. I stayed in the closet. I never hung out with anybody else but her. It had to be obvious that we were still a couple. Um, but I, I let it be that way. It was just, it was easier than dealing with it. In retrospect, I don't think that I was right. I know that, in fact, I know that I was wrong to do that, but it was the process I went through. So at one point, we met this friend who was a photographer. She did this gorgeous work and she wanted to take photos of my girlfriend and I in a bathtub, very tasteful photos, no nudity, nothing disgusting or pornographic. It was this old, gorgeous bathtub and there were bubbles everywhere and everything was covered up and then we were doing a very gentle little sweet kiss with each other. And I guess I had all these extra copies I really don't know why one of them ended up in the trash can in my bedroom um, of the house where I was staying with my mom, but it did. <laughs> one of them ended up in the trash can and my puppy, I had a puppy, her name was Casey, she got into everything and she took the trash can and knocked it over and left everything all over the floor of my room one day when I was at work. And my mom came in and was picking up and that's how I was outed. I came home from work and my mom was in her room in bed with my dad who was snoring and asleep. And I walked in, I had done the night shift at work, I was working in a restaurant and she looked petrified and she had tissues and she'd been crying and I thought I was going to hear something horrible. I mean, looking at my mom like that, I thought I was going to hear something devastating and my stomach dropped and I got scared to death and I was bracing myself for the worst. And when she told me, what was making her feel that horrified that she knew now that I was gay, I got instantly pissed off for the moment that I just went through, worrying about my mom and, oh my God, what is she about to tell me? And that was it? Are you kidding me? And I got mad and I said, yes, I'm gay, deal with it. And I walked out of her room. Well, that was the beginning of the next six years, which were terrible in terms of the process with my family. And, um, I sent her the book, Now That You Know, and I'm sure a lot of people have mentioned this in their coming out story. It's a good book. It was written by straight parents who had to go through the process of finding out their kids were gay, and they wrote their experiences in a book to share with other parents, and I, I thought it was a great idea. I bought it for her. I sent it to her, and um, she hid it under her mattress so that none of her friends would see it. 
so anyway, we went through the next several years this way. And I moved out to Los Angeles. I was living with my girlfriend. And I would go home for every holiday. And I started to realize, you know, my si I have two straight sisters. And they would have their boyfriend du jour come over. You know, some guy they were dating, some guy they barely knew, some guy they dated for three months. He was over for Christmas dinner. And my girlfriend, I wasn't even allowed to mention her name. And I finally reached a point where I was like, you know what, this is not okay. I'm not allowed to tell my closest cousins and family that I even have a girlfriend. I'm supposed to pretend I'm single. Not necessarily lie, but just not bring it up. And I was really, really, really hurt by this. Really insulted by this. And I was convinced that if my mom would just meet my life, if she would just come and see my life, it would be different. Because I knew that she was living in her fearful, projected, God only knows what she was thinking in her head. And I knew it was about the fear of the unknown because I knew the people in my life. And I knew, I knew that my mom could probably identify more with my friends than she could with my straight sister's friends, which has come to be proven to be the case. We were just more conventional like my mom than my sister's friends were. And it had nothing to do with sexuality. So she came to Los Angeles, where I was now living, and after a few visits of just refusing to meet my friends and insisting that while she was here, we were going to do mom and daughter things. We were going to go shopping, we were going to go to a museum, we were going to go to the beach, and she was going to leave town, and it wasn't going to be about gayness at all. And I would explain to her, you know, you're missing out on an entire part of my life. It's not my gayness, it's my relationship, it's my friends, it's my, it's my life out here. And these are really great people. And... I tried to tell her, you know, they're just someone's son or someone's daughter or someone's sister. They're just people just like me. And what if there was someone's mom refusing to talk to me, refusing to meet me because she was afraid of what they were going to meet? So the next time she came out to L.A., I tricked her into hanging out with my friends. And I was dating a woman who was a lawyer and, like, could not be more Martha Stewart and more, like, mom-friendly in terms of a homophobic mom. And she made dinner and... I brought my mom over and she was so nervous and so tight and scared and my mom is really shy anyway and after halfway through the dinner she realized that I was dating this lovely, lovely woman and she really liked her. Um, in fact, 12 years later, uh, I'm no longer in that relationship but that ex-girlfriend and I are still very good friends and my mom and her still talk on the phone. <laughs> so they loved each other. And in fact, after a while, once they got to know each other, it was kind of like them against me when we were in the room, which I just sat back and enjoyed because I had waited for so long. And the day that my mom looked at her while she was visiting and said, can't you take the day off from work tomorrow and tell them you're hanging out with your mother-in-law? I thought I was going to die. And I knew she'd turned a corner. Um, and it, it was all about bringing her out of the fear of the unknown and having her meet my friends and meet my girlfriend. And she's recently, you know, said, I've never met anyone in your life I didn't like. And that really was what changed it for me. I got to see that, you know, you had to put gas in your car and you had to go grocery shopping and you, everything was exactly still the same about you and you weren't kidding about that. And it was all my own fears that was keeping me separate. So, I took a long road with my mom, but it's a happy ending here because she fully accepts my life. She fully accepts my girlfriend. She is invited for Christmas. She buys her presents. You know, it's, it, she's come full circle. In fact, there was one time when I went through a bad breakup several years ago and I was on the phone with my mom and just being exasperated, you know, I said, women are crazy. I'm going back to men. And my mom went, what are you talking about? because she'd come to know that she knew me and this was who I was and it was okay. So that's, you know, that's the coming out story of mine. I did have a lot of controversy to deal with. My, my sisters, when I told my sisters I was gay, they went, duh. They just kind of knew that the girl I'd been hanging out with was my girlfriend and they were sort of just waiting for me to tell them. And my father, who would not, he, he would not, Side, not not side with my mom. He couldn't be too okay with it because that would make her feel really isolated and uncomfortable. So he would be okay with it when she wasn't in the room. And when she was in the room, he would just kind of stay silent. Um, having said that, you might find that in your family, there's that one person that everyone else is protecting. 
talk to those people when you're alone with them. Um, I found this to be the case. I thought that my aunt and uncle didn't want to know, that my cousins didn't want to know. I thought that everybody was comfortable with the glass closet. As it turned out, they were just being respectful of my mom. And they knew it made her dreadfully uncomfortable, so they didn't want to bring it up. They didn't want to talk about it. They were respecting not inviting my girlfriends to things out of respect for my mom. A decade later, everyone has grown and changed and realized it was just about fear. Um, I identify my sexuality as gay. I'm a lesbian, for sure. <laughs> really not much more to say about that. <laughs> What I would say to young people, or even older people, is A, you have to come out. B, and the reason is this, it's not just about yourself anymore. It's about all of us. As a community, we are not progressing. We are not getting our equal rights. There are countries right now writing new legislature to make homosexuality be punishable by death. We are moving backwards. Human nature needs to find the underdog. They need to find that limping gazelle out in the, in, the, in the field that's going to be the prey. I don't really know why, just they do. And they need to find that culture. We're it. We're it. Racial issues are moving forward. And, and religious issues are moving forward. They're finding their equality. They're finding their safe zones. We have not. And you need to come out so that we can all join hands energetically and move forward as a community there are horrible things happening to us and it's visibility that's going to change that so if you're still too scared and you still don't you're saying I don't care about that that's I can't be a part of that movement this is too difficult for me what I'm then going to say to you is what's your other choice to live an inauthentic life then whose life are you living it's not your own your own life is going to be led by your heart and if you don't follow that you're living a lie and that's really sad you have to you have to find a strong and assertive compassionate yet calm way to always be true to yourself and whenever you're going to make any decision no matter how big or small about this issue ask yourself what's my truth and then how do I go about it by keeping myself safe and doing that without having to lie or hide. If you run all of your questions and scenarios through that filter, you'll, you'll probably be okay. But just refuse to live a lie. Refuse it. You deserve your own life. The ladies. Um. Excuse me? <laughs> Um, you, honey, I love you. Have you seen my girlfriend? <laughs> You're asking me what I love about being gay? Okay. Um, I'll tell you I'll, what I love about being gay. Aside from all of the, you know, great, wonderful things about our culture that makes us different and makes us, makes us who we are, I've often reflected on the fact that I know so much more about myself, I think, than I ever would have if I didn't have to pay attention the way that I have to pay attention. When I woke up one day and knew that the regular template of a life as it had been described to me wasn't gonna fit me and there was no other option except for me to consistently and every day ask myself questions, is this right for me? Is this what I want? Is this what my heart wants? Is this what I can do? Um, I don't know that if I hadn't been gay that it, it would have happened so consistently in that way, I probably would have fallen into a template. I would have fallen in love with a boy. We would have done what you do. You get married, you have kids, you have a job, you have a house, you have a car. Nothing wrong with that. That is what is intended for a lot of people, but it wasn't intended for me. And had I not been gay, I wouldn't have been forced to explore myself as deeply as I have to find my answers because there were no answers for me anywhere. I had to be committed to finding what my truthful answers, answers were and I think I've lived a, a really full, well-rounded life that I examine every day and that can only make it fuller. <laughs>